Marie Antoinette was born an Archduchess of Austria in 1755. Her mother, Maria Therese of Austria, promised Antoinette to the French Dauphin, Louis XVI, in order to strengthen the alliance between Austria and France. In 1770, Marie Antoinette left her Austrian life behind and married Louis XVI. According to some historians, Antoinette's reputation began to weather just shortly after her marriage. By tradition, the newlywed couple was brought to their bed by courtiers, who expected them to consummate their marriage later that night. However, nothing happened. Their failure to consummate their marriage caused much concern among the courtiers and royal families on either side. Speculations ranged from Louis XVI's inability to sexually perform to Antoinette's failure to arouse her husband. Letters between Therese and Antoinette revealed her mother's deep concern for Antoinette's failure to produce an heir to the throne. Without an heir to the throne, Antoinette's place in France and Austrian security could not be assured. Seven years later, however, Antoinette gave birth to a baby girl, the first of four children. Still, this did not put an end to the growing accusations against her. During the early years of her marriage, some historians suggested Antoinette's behavior grew increasingly inappropriate. Her love for gambling, partying, and shopping sprees added to the population's already dwindling amount of regard for her. In 1774, Louis XV died of smallpox, leaving the throne to the 19-year-old Louis XVI. Thus began Antoinette's reign as the last queen of France, and also the beginning of the Antoinette we've come to know today. It is important to consider France's condition before and during Louis XVI and Antoinette's reign. The recent end of the Seven Years' War in 1763 left France in economical turmoil. Outrageous bread prices and a decentralized tax system fostered public unrest. The people were angry at the shortage of bread, even though bread was barely affordable. To add to this, ideas inspired by the Enlightenment further promoted revolutionary ideas amongst the lower and recently born middle classes. Admittedly too naive to rule, Louis XVI struggled to ease France's deteriorating condition. The nobles abolished his attempts at tax reformations, which led to his growing unpopularity with the nobles and lower classes. As a result, Louis XVI called upon the Estates General in order to create a reasonable tax system. However, the withdrawal of his support for the Third Estate, the representative body of the general population, gave way to even more conflict. The Third Estate, now self-proclaimed as a National Assembly, vowed to meet until they'd create a French constitution. These events marked the beginning of the French Revolution, during which revolutionaries sought to replace absolutist monarchy with the constitutional government. By 1790, popular rebellions had spread throughout the cities and countryside, emphasizing the population's anger towards the young monarchs. France's circulating ideas of revolution concerned the other European powers, most notably Austria and Prussia, who later invaded Paris in an attempt to control the rebellions. This was met with even more uprising, proving that international inter intervention could not stop the revolution. Revolutionaries had one thing in mind, and that was to bring down the monarchy. Antoinette's failure to control her lavish lifestyle seems to demonstrate her disregard for the French population's struggle. She spent her nights gambling and partying until morning. She'd then wake up around noon and go about her days buying expensive, quality gowns, jewelry, and other delicate accessories. Her fashionable display upset the French people, who blamed her for the economical turmoil of the time. She was also known to retreat to the small cottage farm on palace grounds, known as the Queen's Hamlet. There, she and a small group of friends would imitate peasant life by dressing simple, tending to animals, and harvesting. She felt inspired by Rousseau's philosophy to get back to nature. However, her desire to escape to the hamlet was seen as a mockery of peasant life from the French people, causing even more resentment for the queen. The people saw Antoinette as a queen who surrounded herself in extravagance while they suffered and starved. This soon earned Antoinette the nickname of Madame de Facite. Revolutionaries saw this as an opportunity to further their cause for revolution. Pamphlets against the queen, known as Labelles, circulated through the general population. These labels accused Antoinette of homosexuality, rampant adultery, and depletion of France's treasury. They also accused her of having a heavy political influence over the king, 
seducing Louis XVI to favor Austria's welfare over France's. Public outrage grew by the day. Based off of a play on words, Antoinette was often depicted as a human-ostrich hybrid. She was also depicted as a harpy, a Greek mythical monster that stole food and other resources from the needy. Most of the time, the Labelles portrayed pornographic cartoons of the queen as a core representation of her self-indulgent nature. According to popular opinion of the time, Marie Antoinette was the worst French queen. Her most popular legend involves the words, let them eat cake, in response to hearing of the people's suffering. Despite popular opinion, many historians suggest that Marie Antoinette was already destined for tragedy. According to historians, the path to revolution had been paved, regardless of who held the French throne. It was clear that the people's frustration with the absolutist monarchy and privileged nobles would lead to popular uprisings. The peasants held much of the tax burden, while the upper class paid little to nothing to appease the brittle economy. Furthermore, Historians suggest that French queens were expected to surpass courtiers in fashion and extravagance. Because of France's economy, however, Antoinette's spending habits appeared insensitive and cruel. On the other hand, researchers also agree that Antoinette's gambling and partying habits were inappropriate. Those who've studied Antoinette's life and death seem to come up with two main causes for her excessive spending. One is that she was simply oblivious. Although she was educated, she was never taught how to deal with a suffering population. In addition, she was just too young to know otherwise. Others suggest that her questionable behavior stemmed from the emotional distress of leaving her family behind at such a young age and being stripped of her Austrian identity. Moreover, Louis XVI's apathetic action and unwillingness to consummate their marriage added to Antoinette's already weakened emotional state. The constant criticism from her mother, courtiers, and general population pushed her towards gambling, drinking, and shopping. Historians also agree that Antoinette had never said, let them eat cake. According to them, many variations of this line had reappeared throughout history in many European and non-European countries. Antoinette was simply a victim of the time. After birthing her children, Antoinette's days of partying and extravagance began to simmer down. Her main concern was the well-being of her children and their place in French royalty. As a result, Antoinette became increasingly involved in French politics, many times arguing against Austrian interests. She also began to take on a more motherly and responsible portrayal, an attempt to dissolve the allegations made against her in the Labelles. However, the failing health of one of her sons put an end to her efforts to rebuild her reputation, and the rumors continued. As the movement towards a constitution increased, Louis XVI held increasingly less power and control over his subjects. By 1791, the royal family felt obligated to flee France, but did not succeed. They were captured on the road and returned to Paris. The mobs of Paris had proved their power over the monarch throughout this time, by 1792, Louis XVI was stripped of his power as the National Convention became the governing body of France, the first French Republic. In, in January of 1793, Louis XVI was tried for treason and executed at the guillotine. Later that year, Antoinette had been tried as well. She was found guilty of depleting France's treasury, harboring the enemy, Austria, incest with her son, and several other accounts regarding responses to the revolts. Clothed in a white dress, Marie Antoinette was executed at the guillotine, thus marking the official end of the monarchy. Among the most credible sources portraying Antoinette are the letters she's written to her mother and other family members. These letters provide an exceptional first-hand experience of Marie Antoinette's life in France. There are letters from her first arrival in France all the way to the days just before her execution. Through these, we can get an intimate glimpse of Antoinette's life that could help reveal the truth behind the controversial rumors her legend left behind. 
Other reliable resources include memoirs by Madame Campan, Antoinette's assistant, and Madame Lebrun, a famous French painter during this time. Both of these women had personally dealt with the queen. Madame Lebrun had painted the queen several times and documented her interactions with her. She especially noted the queen's fashion and manner. Madame Campan was a noble who served as Antoinette's personal assistant. Her memoir includes detailed anecdotes of daily happenings in Versailles, especially involving Louis XVI's political struggle. Her memoir is rich with personal details about Marie Antoinette from her arrival in France up until her execution. Other sources include primary sources and biographies backed with extensive research. There are several paintings of Antoinette and the royal family. These paintings most notably show the difference between young, carefree Antoinette and the motherly, more responsible Antoinette. They also depict the capture of the royal family and each member's execution. Other sources include the drawings from Lebel's. These best portray public opinion of Antoinette during her reign as queen. Biographies by Chantal Thomas and Antonia Fraser are well known for their efforts to uncover the truth behind the queen and her public reputation. Both authors have dedicated large amounts of research on Marie Antoinette and France at the time in order to best represent a more accurate portrayal of the queen. Marie Antoinette may have led an extravagant lifestyle in her youth, which seemed to represent her indifference to the people's struggles. However, research suggests that a majority of the allegations made against her were untrue and had actually stemmed from the goal of revolution. The story of Marie Antoinette is one that has been etched in tragic misunderstanding and an ill-fated destiny.